In today's video, we are going to develop a comparison between the refrigerant gases R134A and one of its substitutes in the new automotive air conditioning systems, which is R1234EF. R1234EF is a substance remarkably similar in cooling performance to its predecessor, R134A, while having a global warming potential, GWP, of 1, compared to the GWP of R134A, which is 1430. Both R134A and R1234EF are pure refrigerants, meaning they are composed of a single gas. Therefore, both R134A and R1234EF can be recharged in both liquid and gas phases without any issues. R1234EF requires specific POG, PVE, and PO oils designed for this gas. It's important to ensure that the oil used is compatible with R1234EF. R1234EF is highly corrosive, so only clean and properly specified lubricants can protect the system. R134A uses PO oil in conventional refrigeration and POG oil in automotive air conditioning. R1234EF has low toxicity, is slightly flammable, and shows excellent compatibility with most materials. It is classified as A2L, Group L2 in terms of safety. Similarly, R134A is non-toxic, non-flammable, and classified as A1, L1. In addition to the automotive sector, both R134A and R1234EF are used in chillers for air conditioning in buildings and machine cooling. Vehicles using R1234EF have different service fittings compared to vehicles using R134A to prevent cross-contamination with different refrigerants. For example, adapters are required to connect pressure measurement gauges. R1234EF is more expensive than R134A. It is not recommended to change from R1234EF to R134A for legal reasons. Although the system may operate in cool, when switching from R1234EF to R134A, its performance and capacity will be affected and some inconveniences may arise, which we will discuss next. Our 1234 systems that control freeze protection by pressure may lose cooling performance if charged with our 134A. This is due to the lower adjustment requirement of our 134A. Mixing our 134A with our 1234EF will alter the refrigerant pressure and may result in evaporator freezing in pressure controlled systems, reducing the airflow. The expansion valve setting for our 1234EF refrigerant is different compared to our 134A. Changing from our 1234EF to our 134A may result in a system with incorrect refrigerant flow and heat exchanger maldistribution, leading to a loss of cooling performance or durability issues. Changing from our 1234YF to our 134A can result in an increase in suction line pressure drop, reducing the efficiency of the equipment. This can be particularly damaging, in the case of dual evaporator systems. Now let's study the operating pressures of both refrigerant gases. On the screen we have the table of pressure and temperature of the refrigerant gas R1234GF. We are going to study the most used pressure. In this case, R1234GF refrigerant gas is mainly used in automotive air conditioning. And some manufacturers are using this gas in their chiller type water chillers. So, for example, for an evaporator temperature of 6 degrees Celsius, typical of these applications, about 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. According to the table, it has an absolute pressure of 56.56 psi. Like the table value, it refers to absolute values. We must subtract from this value, the atmospheric pressure, of the place where the equipment is located, which for this case we are going to take a value of 14.7 psi as atmospheric pressure. Subtracting 56.56 psi minus 14.7 psi gives a gauge pressure for the evaporator of 41.86 psi ng. 
Since R1234 GF is used in automotive air conditioning, it must be said that the pressure that we have just shown can occur with the motor vehicle idling, since when the vehicle accelerates, if the compressor is coupled to the engine by a belt, the compressor goes spin faster and system pressure will drop because refrigerant suction increases. Another pressure that is interesting to know is the high or condenser pressure. For this we are going to take the temperature of the environment and we are going to increase it by a value of 15 degrees. So for example, for an ambient temperature of 30 degrees we increase by 15 degrees to find the average temperature of the condenser. Looking in the table we obtain for a condensing temperature of 46 degrees, about 114.8 degrees Fahrenheit, an absolute pressure of 173.75 PSIG. Like the table value, it refers to absolute values. We must subtract from this value, the atmospheric pressure, of the place where the equipment is located, which for this case we are going to take a value of 14.7 psi, as atmospheric pressure. By subtracting 173.75 psi minus 14.7 psi, a manometer pressure for the evaporator of 159.5 psi is obtained. It is important to mention that this pressure also depends on the position of the accelerator of the car, therefore, when accelerating the engine if the compressor is coupled by belts, the pressure of high will increase because the refrigerant gas discharge to the condenser will increase. A low gauge pressure of 2.49 V is needed, equivalent to 36.60 PSIG or 249 kPa. In some cases, it is useful to know the pressure of the equipment when it is turned off, and the high pressure or the condenser. Let's see them. 1. For an external environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the equipment turned off with this temperature, it has a manometric pressure, both high and low, according to the table of 6.70 bar, equivalent to 98.49 PSIG or 670 kPa. 2. For an outdoor environment temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, the condenser temperature is usually about 10 degrees Celsius, above the environment where the equipment is located. Thus in the table, for 40 degrees Celsius, about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The high gauge pressure in the condenser is 9.18 bar, equivalent to 134.94 PSIG or 918 kilopascals.